Mind of the Meanie is now an exclusive brand partner with WWEShop.com. Pick up all your favorite new merchandise from Roman Reigns. Acknowledge me. Cody Rhodes. I have to finish the story. LA Knight. Let me talk to you. And more using our exclusive link in the show notes. Click below and show your support today for your favorite WWE superstar at WWEShop.com. Yeah! Dr. Fisher's Medical Weight Loss and Aesthetic Centers, along with Mind the Meanie Podcast, presents Meanie Mania, a paper brew kickoff event, Thursday night, April 4th, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m., 21 and older to attend with no cover at McCusker's Tavern on the corners of 17th at Shunk at 2601 South 17th Street in South Philly. Come hang out with ECW Original and WWE alumni The Blue Meanie at his favorite bar on the planet, McCusker's Tavern. McCusker's is the perfect spot to kick off your Mania week and go to for a pre- and post-wrestling event hang. Remember, McCusker's is cash only, but they do have an ATM on site. Lyft, Uber, and taxi services are highly recommended to and from McCusker's. Seven minutes from Lincoln Financial Field, 10 minutes from the 2300 Arena, and 15 minutes from Center City. Meanie Mania is also brought to you by Dr. Fisher's Medical Weight Loss and Aesthetic Centers on 2543 South Broad Street in Philadelphia. Go to bodybyfishernow.com. That's bodybyfishernow.com. Mind of the Meanie podcast drops every Monday morning at 6 a.m. And find our entire archive at mindofthemeanie.com. Meanie Mania, the pay-per-brew kickoff event, Thursday night, April 4th, 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Twenty twenty four is here in full swing, and that means it's time for a New Year's resolution check in with our friends at Manscaped. Newsflash: It's never too late to level up your grooming game and keep your bush tamed. Manscaped's new lawnmower five point ultra is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether you're going for a trim or that clean shaven look, this trimmer has you covered. Trusted by 10 million men worldwide. Now is your time to get a grip on your grooming with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code MINDMEANY for 20% off plus free shipping. The ball has dropped, but don't drop the ball on your balls. Introducing the MVP of 2024, Manscaped's fifth generation lawnmower. It's not just a trimmer, it's your grooming sidekick. And let me tell you something, some of my New Year's resolutions have been to, to eat healthy, get in shape, and keep little John on the East Side boys looking fine and dandy. And I'm hitting three for three this year so far. And the Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 is equipped with two skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It's like having a personal stylist at your fingertips, or really wherever you need it. And did we mention that it's waterproof? Because a trim in the shower is the only way to start your day. And for my guys who want the full grooming experience, look no further than Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0. Inside of that grooming kit, you'll get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped's ear and nose hair trimmer, and essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother Ball Aftershave Lotion and the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Yeah, it's deodorant for your balls. Bet you didn't think you needed that, but guess what you do? And as a gesture for the new year, they even threw in two free gifts, the Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 toiletry bag because they know good and well you're still rocking your boxers from high school. Let's face it, resolutions come and go, but a well-groomed you is here to stay thanks to Manscaped. So go to manscaped.com right now and get 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code MINDMEANING. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code MINDMEANING at manscaped.com. Embrace a new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer courtesy of Manscaped. And as always, we thank them for sponsoring the program. This is the Mind of the Meanie. Here are your hosts, the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. Peace world and welcome to the Mind of the Meanie, your weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, and hopefully Hall of Famer, the Blue Meanie. We'll cover <laughs> wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I'm your tour guide, Adam Barnard, and he is the Blue Meanie. Meanie, what's on your mind? Man, I either uh, 
Get too much sleep or too little sleep. Yeah, and, dude. Uh, today's one of those fucking days. As we record, February 17th, uh, 1243, your power has been restored. We are live. Let there be We're light. We're live, pal. Let there be light. Uh, yeah, man, it's got to suck to live out there. Live it like... It seems like anybody who lives lives out anywhere like remotely, like they always have power issues. Like, yeah. I have friends who like live in South Jersey and up oh, powers out, you know, and just like Jesus Christ, man, that's got to be that's got to suck. It's a pain in the ass, man. Like I said, it's like we used to when we lived in Westchester, we never had to worry about it because we were on the Chester County Hospital electric grid. So whenever power went out, it was for like 30 seconds. But I swear to God, every time the fucking wind blows here, more than five miles an hour, the power's out. And it's like, oh, it's going to be six hours to fix it. Like, why? Like, how is this possible? <laughs> how yeah, does this man. keep happening? So, but no, it's uh, it's delightful. Yeah, I know, you know people are like, well, got to, I know some people like have generators. And I'm like, how does that work? How do you like, do you plug your, how do you plug your house into... <laughs> So here's how dumb I'm like, oh, how do you plug your house into the generator? <laughs> I actually you know, I actually don't know how. That, I know like somewhat how it works on like a commercial scale because it's what I do for work like in, in my job. Um, but residential, I think it's like, I think it literally is connected to, I don't know. It's something in like your main power source. And my brother-in-law has a giant one in their house and it's basically just in the, it's not a gas powered one or something, but it's like just, that's why he, like the last time, I think when we recorded a couple months ago, we had that big storm that came through. We were out of power here for like four days. We recorded at Mike's house and he was like, oh yeah, this generator will run for like another couple days. I'm like, how, how does that, how do you find something that does that? You know, like, yeah. how is this possible? So yeah, I don't know. Almost I, makes I, you want to invest in like solar panels or something like that. Yeah. Seems like a good idea. It's probably better, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure they'll figure out the, some way to uh, screw you over, like tax you with it or something like that. But hey, listen, you got some panels on the roof. Uh, it's gonna be another twenty five percent on your taxes, there, Meany. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say, but now you yeah. owe us double. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, probably. Pretty. Yeah. Good- and uh, shout out to uh, Machete Von Kill in our <laughs> chat. I remember our uh, podcast. She says it's 2024. Why haven't we gone to burying the power lines, et cetera, underground? So the weather doesn't affect them. And I agree. I've I've totally thought that like, why not mm-hmm. just like have have them underground? Have like a if something happens, like there's a little trap door you open up and go, oh okay, this one and yeah. bloop, fix, and then be on about your day. Why is this shit above ground? You know, we have fucking electric cars, dude. We have fucking. We have sneakers with lights in the back of them. We have the Star Trek doors that go whoosh. We can't figure this yeah. shit out. Yeah. What the fuck, man? The fuck. And plus, know. it'll get people's job digging up holes and stuff like that. You know, we don't want to do that. So. Listen, anybody who's listening who works at Pico, my grandfather legit drew all the fucking power line maps and all the sewer line maps. So if you want to dig, you can fucking just grab what jinx did and they're all down there in a fucking uh, somewhere in pico's archives but yeah go ahead and use them you're welcome in advance by the way but it's yes. good to see you sir it's great to see you here on this uh good to this, see you my friend this saturday morning as we're or afternoon rather as we're recording but also if you're listening it's monday and you could be listening to us with saturday if you go and sign up right now at patreon.com slash mind of the meanie sign up today tears start at just ten dollars and you get to join us and see our beautiful faces each and every week but Meanie, I wanted to start at the top real fast before we get into your. Oh hall yeah, of, we start gaming out your Hall of Fame speech. I wanted oh, to talk. That's why I wore the shirt today because I'm uh, I'm putting good energy out into the world here for you, pal. Um, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about your post about uh, the World Wrestling Federation's Rock the Dwayne Johnson last night after his appearance <laughs> on SmackDown. Uh, <laughs> TV's Rock the Dwayne. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that because, and I wanted to kind yeah. of like game this out for anybody who's watching or listening right now. Uh, Friday Night SmackDown happened, and it was the first time uh, Roman Reigns and The Rock were in the ring together since the Las Vegas press event, media event that happened a couple weeks back. And uh, Meanie and I had some thoughts about this, but I want to start with Meanie because Meanie had a great thread 
that he posted. And if you haven't read it, go and follow him now at Blue Meanie BWO on all forms of social media. But I want to give yes. you the opportunity to kind of game that out. Uh, and so we can kind of discuss that and pull that apart here because I was really fascinated by it. It's just, I watch with different eyes. You know, in wrestling, there's telltale signs that they, you know, like to do. Like, like when I was a kid, I, I kind of called, like I say this, but I don't know if, if I was 100% accurate. I'm like, you know, you can kind of tell when somebody's turning heel or turning face or stuff like that. Like, you know, uh, I believe I called when Andre was going to turn heel on Hogan and they do stuff, you know, when, you know, the rockers are going to break up, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But they, you know, when it comes to Cody, Roman Reigns and The Rock, there's just a lot of telltale signs that, Whatever they're doing right now with The Rock is just a ruse mm -hmm. to kind of like upend the bloodline. Um, and to me, I start a couple of weeks ago where, you know, Rock said, you know, you call me this, you call me that, you call me the head of the table, you know, yeah. stuff, you know. So, you know, Cody wins the Rumble. He, uh, go, you know, he, he, he confronts the... You know, he confronts Roman Reigns and, you know, it says, you know, I need to, I need that belt. I need to, I need everything. You know, you say that every, you own everything. You, you own this ring. You own that table. You this, that, and I, I, I need it. I want that belt. I want every, I want to take everything from you. And then, there, you know, he has, he's like, but, you know, uh, I've been speaking to some counsel. You know, uh, I'm going to, Finish my storyline, but not WrestleMania, which makes Rocco, I mean, makes Roman Reigns go, huh? Rock comes out. Rock, uh, you know, goes up to Cody and uh, has one of those moment in translation movie scenes where he's whispering something in his ear and Cody's just smiling, like, yeah, mm hmm. All right, you know, steps aside. And, you know, they purposely show Cody walking away, which was like, to me, it was like, that's odd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, it was odd, but it seemed purposeful to where, why did they just sh show Cody moving away or leaving, right? And then they, you know, Rock and Roman are facing off and they inch their, you know, way towards each other and then they go off the air, you know, flash forward to the press event in uh, Vegas. And, uh, you know, The Rock is, you know, pretty much saying, you know, he's challenging Roman Reigns for the belt. Shows the uh, 23andMe uh, family tree uh, heritage line and stuff like that. And, you know, do the thing. And then, you know, Cody comes out. You know, he says he's challenging Roman for the thing. And they put up the graphic and everything. And, you know, they, you know, they do the uh, predator, you son of a bitch, hand <laughs> fucking gesture. Yep. They do... You know, uh, they do the handshake and you know, a hug and Cody comes out and says, this is bullshit. And uh, to me that, you know, it, to me, I, when it comes to, the, I'm, I'm trying to piece out what I wrote. Because for me, when I write something, it's just, I weave it in and out and stuff like that. So to me, it's just, Cody comes out, says, you know, this is bullshit and, uh, you know, uh, if your grandfathers were here, you know, they would be so ashamed of you, And which right. has, you know, The Rock stepped forward real quick and addresses Cody and slaps Cody. And uh, they have that little pull apart. And then, you know, you have Seth on uh, Raw Monday saying, you know, you don't have to go into this alone. Now, flash forward to like last night. And... um you know, the Rock comes out and officially joins the bloodline, mm. and they you know point they're you know at the end you know, you know cut, he cuts the uh, heel promo, yep. You know, and uh, you know when they do the the the, the one up, the, you know the ones point. Rock has his his thumb out, which to me was very 
much on purpose and signifying, you know, that, 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 that L thing, like the L hand gesture is to me is the signal for losing the right. loser. Yeah. Loser. Bleh, you know, <laughs> L on the forehead. So to me, like looking at all of this, Rock is probably not happy with what, how Roman's behaving. Right. He didn't like the way, you know, Roman, you know, beat Cody last year with all the interference. But in order to, you know, you know, kind of set Roman straight, he's kind of joining the bloodline to kind of disrupt it from, from the inside, like a mole right. kind of thing, like how a cop goes go undercover and stuff like that. I think this is all a ruse between him and Cody mm -hmm. to where, uh, you know, he's whispering to Cody and Cody's like, yep, yep, yep. You know, he, he approached Cody. That's why Cody's like, I've, I've been under counsel, you know. He, so Rock's probably said, look, I don't like the way Roman's doing this thing. I think he's insulting the family, you know, busting up Jay and, you know, the, busting up the Usos and stuff like that. And he's been on this power trip. And I think, you know, The Rock is kind of joining the bloodline as a way as a little, you know, uh, subterfuge, little uh, bust up the, uh, you know, the, the, the spy on and the bust up the, uh, the bloodline from one end. So when it comes down to WrestleMania, you know, last year, you know, Cody basically had to fight the whole bloodline. Yeah. You know? Yep. Now he's got Seth saying, you don't have to do this alone. I think the rock will be in, you know, there for Cody to make sure, Nothing at me. Maybe he hits Cody with a. Hey, maybe he hits Roman with the, you know, the rock bottom, and mm -hmm. then Cody feeds up into uh, you know, the uh, crossroads. Crossroads. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been. Yeah, I almost called it the uh, old school, old school expulsion or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't even whatever I Frino used to call it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I wrote it out more articulately. Uh, articulately, if that. Yeah. yeah, first day with the new man. <laughs> then uh, I just explained it, but uh, I, I watched SmackDown this morning, and I was like, "Man, they, there's no way it, you know the Rock didn't purposely just throw up a a finger point with his thumb out." You know, he, I'm sure he knows the finger point, but you know, I, I think I think they're leaving little breadcrumbs out there for us to see. So the day after WrestleMania. When they show all the, the things leading up to happen that match, yeah, you'll see all the telltale signs, like uh, you know when uh, Hogan and Savage broke up. You know they show the footage of Hulk putting Elizabeth on Randy Savage's shoulder, and he's accidentally touching Elizabeth's ass. You know, yep. just yep, yeah, just all the like the little things that they did leading up to it. You had lust in your eyes, Hogan. You know that, all that kind of shit. Yeah, so yeah, so to me, I feel that the rock's on Cody's side, but he's doing what he can to. I mean, look at all the times you know Roman's almost lost the belt, but the yeah. bloodline's been there to, to bail him out. Yep, you know every time, every time, every every time. So, what better way to counteract that but? Go in, acting like you're, you know, acting like you're you're part of them, and you know, I don't think Rock is going to place second fiddle to Roman. No, you know, no. if he, I mean, even you know, when Ro Rock's out there, you kind of see him, his his aura just overshadow everybody. You know, yeah. I thought you I thought you did a great job there just articulating what you what the post was and I just shared it on our mind of the meanie page from from meanie's Twitter account but um I've really kind of felt the same way since the beginning of this right yeah. there's little subtle hints that are happening as you watch it right and the and you have to be mindful of the things that they're saying too right this I'll yeah. give you I'll give you like kind of where I'm at with it and then I'll give you like my hot take that I haven't shared anywhere yet until right now. But it's something I've been thinking about <laughs> and I've been saving for just for Gotta you. Gotta have a hot take. I got a hot take, y'all. 
Wish I had a button to hit that it's like a hot take, something fun. I don't, I'm sorry, but maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll do a fart noise. There we go. That's my hot take. But anyway, I digress. I think I blew out the hole in my pants on that one. But yeah. um, Cody says, you know, he's taking counsel with, with, with people and Rock shows up and they sort of pivot from the storyline where it feels like it's supposed to be going. I don't see any other way for this to end. It's kind of like to piggy, piggyback off of what you were saying. Like, I don't see any other way for this to end except for Rock turning on Roman. That's the story, right? Yeah. You're talking about two stories that are happening simultaneously, right? You figure yeah. Jay leaving the bloodline wasn't an accident, right? Like that's all building to something as well. Jay has been working with Cody since he left SmackDown, went to Raw, and is now basically learning the bloodline from inside, right? You have a guy who was there, who was inside of that, who helped him lose last time knows the weak spots, knows what to do. So I think Jay is going to be involved in it. And yeah. then I think, I think they're going to tie Jay back into this after the match he has with Gunther. And I think Seth, everybody's like, oh, Seth's going to turn. And no, I don't think that's going to happen at all. Seth is, there's the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Parallel, that, that, that saying, right? And Seth's tired of his belt being looked at as the uh, secondary belt. I think, I know there's a lot of people at the Vegas, who, who watched the Vegas event were like, oh, Seth just got shit on. I personally think that that made Seth look stronger than yeah. he did coming out of the, you know, the, the shit he was doing on Twitter, challenging Cody, yeah. fight me, fight now. I think he looks stronger because they had him on the same stage with everybody. It made him look like a big player, right? And yeah. now that they brought him into this whole thing and he was like, look, you know, you don't have to do this alone. I'm the shield, you know, but like tying back these little bits, right? But one thing I notice, and you should really kind of watch, and I think this is where like Brian Gewertz becomes like next level with the way that he handles stories. If you watch, and Jimmy Van from Fightful pointed this out, and I, I didn't see it until I watched it again today, and I was like, fuck, that's good shit, right? Rock says something to the effect of, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you walk out of WrestleMania as you are a loser. And as he starts talking, the way that the camera pans, it looks like he's pointing and talking to Roman. And it's, yeah. it's very, very slick. Like it's very sly the way they do it. Right. But I don't think that was an accident. I think he was set purposefully where Roman was supposed to be. And he was standing and they're giving <laughs> you these little tidbits, right? Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know, like maybe I'm reading too much into it, but like, why would you do a camera cut right at that moment, right when he's standing, right in that position where the camera is framing so it looks like he's pointing at Ra or Roman, right? I'm just saying. Yeah. And then the whole thing with the L, that I think was purposeful as well. I mean, unless he's got bursitis or something, which is never anything fun. Why did he have the, the, the thumb out? You know, like what was he doing there? But I think it's also part, you're going to see, my, my thought long game on this was like, the power struggle, and especially at the Vegas event, if you watch the camera work, like Roman and Cody are standing here, and then Rock purposefully comes out and stands in front of Roman. So mm -hmm. I think I think this whole thing, and they're calling him the high chief on the on the bloodline chart was not an accident, right? I think this whole thing is gonna boil down to where you're gonna start seeing friction between Rock and Roman as whoever yes. the head of the table is, and you're yes. gonna get to Mania and Rock's gonna fuck him out of the title. That's exactly what's going to happen. Rock, he's going to get a taste of his own medicine. You're going to have the typical schmas with Jimmy and Jay and Solo and all that shit. But I think Rock gets involved. And I think that's how Roman drops the title. And then that builds towards the head of the table fight between Rock and Roman. Now- At SummerSlam. At SummerSlam, right? Now, let me ask you a question before I give you my hot take, sir. The official sure. hot take. What do you think, who do you think rather should win the head of the table fight? If that's where they're going. I think Roman wins the head of the table fight. Mm, interesting. Yeah, just because... I don't know. Because you, you, you just had him lose the belt, right? Mm. So you don't want to have him do a double fucking job back-to-back -back kind of thing. You know, 
you had him, you know, world champion for what three years now, almost four, almost four. something like that. Yeah, by oh, by yeah. the time we get to August, by the time we get to, I think it's the twenty third of August is when he would hit four years with that title. Yeah, so he just lost the world title at WrestleMania. Now, if they have a head of the table match at SummerSlam, do you really want him to lose two pay per views in a row, knowing that The Rock is probably, you know? Not going to have another match for a while after that, you know. You know, I mean, he's he's always going to be around. You know, he's on the board and stuff like that. But you have that dream match for SummerSlam, you know. And now that they're doing SummerSlams in stadiums, yeah, you got to you're gonna have a, a a stadium that needs a match. <laughs> yeah. So, I but I think I think Roma would win that match. Just based on the fact that he just lost the belt and he's he's probably got fucking steam fucking shooting out his ears. Yeah. You know, he, he's pissed. And then, uh, but how you do it, where you do it from there, I just don't know. Now, now my other take was like, if this whole rock thing isn't a ruse, because uh, so, so much shit got thrown into fucking shambles with injuries, you know? Yeah. You know, Punk's injury... Stuff like that. What if, you know, Stone Cold comes out to help Cody as well or something like that? If Rock isn't going to turn on Rome and what if that, you know, you know, Stone Cold, who I believe was supposed to, I don't know for a fact, but what if, I, I believe Steve Austin was probably supposed to fight CM Punk mm -hmm. at Mania. Punk's injured. Right, you know, you need you, you got fucking Stone Cold right there. Stone Cold does something to, you know, you know, help Cody. But I'm still going to go with my plan that Rock's in there as a as a double agent. Yeah, as a, you know, as a uh, yeah, it's all a ruse. He's there to get you know either he's either there to make Roman susceptible to lose to Cody. And then, you know, like we said, we have the head of the table match at SummerSlam. But, uh, yeah, I don't, if, if you're going to have the head of the table match at SummerSlam, I think, I think you'd have Roman win. You know, Meanie? What's that, Adam? We hear this a lot. Every CBD company tells you that their product is the best. With quality control measures like lab testing and QR codes now becoming the standard, it can start to seem like all CBD brands are the same, but I'm here to tell you something, Meanie. They are not. Knowing what makes certain brands better will help you spend your money more wisely and have more confidence as you incorporate CBD oils, topicals, capsules, or gummies into your own wellness routine. And that's why we're proud to partner with Green Road CBD as an official sponsor of Mind of the Meanie. And Meanie, I know you're a longtime user of Green Road CBD. How has Green Road CBD helped you in your life? Let me tell you, Green Road CBD is, is a product I've been using for years. And uh, when we started Mind of Meanie, I always was, was like, let's get Green Roads as a, as a sponsor because I use them almost daily, uh, whether it's the gummies, you know, to take care of the aches and pains of 30 years of, of wrestling, the topical solutions uh, that help my knees, help my back, help my elbows, help my shoulders. Green Road CBD has done everything to help me maintain uh, a pain-free existence from all the years of wear and tear as a professional wrestler. And to me, meaning that sounds like the Green Road's difference. And it comes down to a really few important points. They're just part of the reason that they've won industry awards year after year earned thousands of five-star reviews and have heard countless stories from customers just like you about the impact that those products have had on your life. So Green Roads is led by a, co a compounding pharmacist with 25 years of experience helping her community getting healthy. For her and the entire company, it's more than just a job. It's a mission. And not all hemp sourcing is equal, meaning I'm not sure if you're aware of that. But they select, our, they select their hemp from high-quality American farms. And also, not all lab testing is equal, which is why they use an accredited independent lab to conduct full panel tests on every single batch. And that's why Green Roads is an original manufacturer, not just a quote-unquote white label brand. So right now, you can go to greenroads.com, meaning, and save 25% off of your entire purchase. Wow. 25% off of everything, meaning. That's huge. 
And all you have to do is go to their website right now, greenroads.com, and use promo code MEANI at checkout. It's 25% off your entire purchase by using promo code MEANI at greenroads.com. Own the day with Green Road CBD, and we thank them for sponsoring the program. I think for me, it would depend on the story. Um, where do you go with Roman after he loses the title, right? Because if the goal for me is, or for Cody rather, <clears throat> and the way they've been talking about it in the story, if the goal is to take everything from Roman, and I've long been a proponent of like, if Rock comes in to fight Roman as a head of the table match, you know, yeah, you're, like I said, we've said before, like, yeah, you're good, but you're never going to be me. Right? You're never going to be me. You're never going to be as good as I am. And now I'm going to fucking show you that you're, yeah, you're not going to be as good as me. And he beats him, right? I think if that's the case, you could then build Roman to come back as like a super baby face, right? He yeah. has a big, big turn and a big change. And I say all that to say, this is my hot take. I think Paul Heyman's involved in this somehow too. Yeah. I think Heyman is planning on the turn, the double, triple, quadruple turn, whatever the fuck it's going to be, end up being. I think Heyman and Solo, that's how they exit from the bloodline as well. I don't think, I genuinely don't believe the bloodline makes it out of Mania in the form that it's in now. Um, what was, who was Paul talking to outside of Roman's dressing room the, last night? Like he was talking to somebody and... Oh God, who was it? And then like... He, Paul stepped back and let the uh, women in who were bringing in the champagne to the Rock's dressing room. Grace and I Waller. I mean, the Romans. Grace and Waller. Yeah, he's... Yeah. I don't know how he would tie into it. But why is he having a, a, a random conversation with that dude outside of fucking Roman's locker room? Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like how, again, like, it almost feels like... I don't think Paul would do it to turn... Face, because I don't know if I really want to see a Paul Heyman face unless they're going to go like pull up the ECW thing. You know what I mean? Like, and go all the way right. back that way. Like, that's the kind of face I want to see is Paul Heyman. But um, I think with Rock and Roman, it just feels like Paul's got another purpose, right? He doesn't care about Roman. He's going to destroy Roman. And if that means Cody wins the belt, then so be it, right? Right. Um, the Jimmy turns probably not too far away too. Um, but I just feel like it's just, it feels like it's starting to kind of implode on itself a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. it's, it's becoming, and again, like we talked about before, like the whole thing with records and like, you know, uh, Roman is the longest reigning modern day champion. I don't give a shit about him watch beating Hogan's record. I, I don't care. I, I, like, well, okay. shout out to my friend, Shout out to a friend of the show, uh, Conrad Thompson. He's like, yeah. even if you beat Hogan's reign, you're still just the third longest title reign in WWE history. <laughs> right. Who, gi who gives a shit about being third, you know? Who cares? You know, Gunther being the Honky Tonks man, man's ma reign makes him number one. Right. So you want to be number one. So you're going to have the title him long enough to make him just third. Behind Bruno and Backlund, you know, it doesn't make sense. But it, it also, it, it's like, you can't keep that title on him for another four or five years. Like, how are you, you know, like, it just, it's, there's so much that's just being held up right now because of this. And it's like, guys, we got to, like, at some point, you got to move on. How much more story can you tell with this? And I, I yeah. don't think, well, what, let me ask you, like, what do you think? Do you think Rock and Roman needs the title? Oh, Rock and Roman does not need the title. That their their match is an attraction onto itself. Right. You know, Rock never needs to win the belt ever again. He is his own attraction, kind of like an Andre mm -hmm. was where you, you bring him in here and there. And you know, when he comes out, you still get the big reaction. If if you get used to seeing him each and every week, then it, he loses his luster, you know. Yeah. And plus, you want to build up younger talent and stuff like that. So you bring them out as an attraction, you know, here and there. But you, Rock versus Roman definitely does not need the belt. That would, that, that would be a, a waste of a, uh, a match 
on a show where you could have a title match. Else, a title match. The title match is an attraction. The Rock is an attraction. You're having a double. You're having. You're wasting two attractions in two attractions in one match. Yes. So that's why I think you know the belt comes off Roman at Mania in Philly, and then you know wherever SummerSlam is, they have Rock versus Roman. Yep. And then Cody, you know, defends the belt against. Uh, I don't know who yet. I was going to say, well, let's let's game it out since we're fantasy booking here today. Um, <laughs> who do you think? Which I'm not a big fan of, no, but like, not either. I, I, I like the storylines kind of got me invested. Yeah, you know, so, you know, it's like I'll watch the beginning of SmackDown and the SmackDown. Yeah, you know, just to see where what this storyline's doing. You know, it's. Um, I wonder who Cody's first opponent would be uh, as the know. champion. That's a that's a great question. I don't know if he you know he starts you know uh, defending against Solo or you know who knows. I kind of would like to see. I think it'll probably be Drew. I would imagine they might give Drew the the briefcase. <laughs> that too, year. yeah. Drew Drew's been making enough of, a, of enough of a stink. I could see them having like him and Drew having a great program, and Drew beating the one being the one who beats him for the title. You know, like that that could be an interesting turn. Um, yeah, but he's, he's been making enough stink between Seth and Cody. Yeah, that he could go for either title. Yeah. So he, he, I think he goes for Seth. I think it's Drew and uh, I mean, I think it's Drew and Seth at Mania. Yeah, for Seth's title, and then if he doesn't win that, he could try for Cody's belt at SummerSlam. Do you think Seth loses the title at WrestleMania? I don't know. It's hard to tell, man. Because that's kind of the point of him wanting to uh, be a part of Cody's thing is because he is tired of his belt being the secondary belt to Roman's. You right. know, he calls Roman the Hollywood champion and stuff like that. He wants to be the real champion. So, I don't know. It's hard. To, it's like there's so, and again, it's like there's so many different things and layers to the story that's happening all at one time. And it's just, it's such a dope time to be a wrestling fan like it just yeah. feels like there's just so much good shit to be involved with but you look at wwe there's superstar upon superstar upon superstar upon superstar yeah everybody in that company's fucking got something going on they all got some kind of purpose mm -hmm. it's, it's a good time it's like yeah, WWE, wwe's doing amazing stuff right now it's almost like that's one of the few things that i think i, I enjoyed about Russo's booking, what back in the day was like everybody had a story, right? Yeah. Everybody had a purpose, right? You weren't right. just somebody on the card, like you were doing something. And the Final Testament stuff and the stuff with the Street Profits and all these different things there and, and DIY with, the, with uh, the Judgment Day, like they're all building towards something. And it's like, I love that Hunter as the creative head is like kind of layering everything and making it like long-term, right? Because again- I feel like a lot of this is because we're going to be coming out of the bloodline story. And while it's still the prevailing narrative, at some point yeah. you're going to have to pivot and go to something else. What else yeah. do you have that's going to keep people entertained and engaged, right? The Cody storyline yeah. is going to keep going, right? Like he's the all American fucking, you know, Hulk Hogan, 2024, you know, real American kind of guy. And yeah. I think you're going to be able to carry that story long term. But where do you go after the bloodline is over? And I think that's a lot of what this building is is getting to. So, um, fuck, man, I'm excited. And Joe Budden, again, Joe Budden podcast, again, mentioning wrestling. The biggest podcast in the world right now is mentioning Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair and talking about WrestleMania. Like, I feel like we're at a time now almost where it's as popular and as over as it was in some respects as the Attitude Era. What do you, what do you think? As someone who was in the Attitude Era, what do you think about that? Oh, it's definitely huge, man. Especially this time of year, you know, with the uh, mania season upon us. You know, uh, is it as big as the Attitude Era? No. But it, it, there's different uh, factors that go into it, too. You know, you know, Raw was pulling in, like, solid full numbers. You know, there'd be, like, four-point whatevers, five-point whatever, six-point whatevers. Now it's, like, point for this, that, and the other thing. But you also got to take, take into account streaming. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure people are watching illegally. <laughs> uh, you know, so there's that, you know. Uh, but, 
you know, it's a, it's a different era, different way, different ways to watch the product. Yeah. I mean, you can follow along. On, you know, there's some, there's some, some shows I don't need to follow. I don't need to watch the show because they talk about it on social media. Right. And post the clips. And why do I have to watch, why do I have to watch a three hour raw when they're posting, you know, segments on fucking Twitter, yeah. you know? So that's why, you know, I'm saying, you know, Attitude Era had the bigger ratings, but, you know, this era has the wider reach between not only TV, but streaming, social media, stuff like that. But yeah, it is a, a, a good time to be a wrestling fan. Wrestling is doing huge things. WWE is doing huge things. And uh, it's great to watch. Yep. And I want to ask you, I want to pivot real fast from the wrestling chat. And I want to know something specific because I know the Super Bowl has happened since we've last spoken. <laughs> and I yeah. want to know, sir, if you watched the halftime show and what your thoughts were on Usher's performance. Uh, dude, that was pretty good. Was pretty <laughs> good. I, I'm, in, I'm in the right age demographic, I guess. You know, uh, it did look like he was trying out for the movie Dodgeball there for a second there with the, the body suit. <laughs> Courtney said the same thing. She was like, why does he look like White Goodman? <laughs> ah, that's fucking great. But fucking amazing. Yeah. You know, it was really good halftime show. He sounded amazing, looked amazing. You know, we had to, me and Mrs. Me were looking up his age. He's still young. It's like, you know, it's, you know, younger people are like, oh, he's old. No, no, to me, he's still young. Yeah. So he's only, he's in his mid forties, right? Early to mid forties. Something like that. Yeah, he look, he looks amazing. Yeah, um, sounded amazing. Uh, was it uh, Lil, uh, Lil John was there? Like, Lil John, dude, I was popping so hard for him. I don't. know. It's just <laughs> he just makes me happy. That guy just makes me happy. I just pop. I laugh. You know what? You know, <laughs> I love it. I just he's so good, so good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the whole thing was amazing. Alicia Keys, um, what's his face? Uh, well, Ludacris was there, ball. and Jermaine Dupri Ru- from So So Deaf. I, yeah, I thought, I thought, I thought Jermaine Dupri was CeeLo for a second there. I did too. I was like, "What the fuck is CeeLo doing here?" I mean, dope, but like, I don't know if they've ever yeah. really worked together. <laughs> like, what's he doing here? Yeah, yeah, I thought he was CeeLo. Yeah. You know? He looked like a you know, <laughs> shout out to my boy uh, Ike Reese from ninety four WIP. Say he, he was dressed like a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the sh- like what was the- he looked like? He was going into like a four year old tap dancing performance with the shoes, you know, like at the dance recital. Like he was in uh, Pennsylvania Dutch country, <laughs> country uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. <laughs> He's going to drink some birch beer. Yep, he's going to have a shoe fly pie. Um, yeah. What did you think about the game? What did you think about the Super Bowl in general? Oh, oh I loved it. I love. <laughs> oh, uh, look, if you're a 49ers fan, I'm sorry, yeah. but I took great joy in watching them take their medicine. Yeah. The uh, 49ers talk a lot of shit. They've talked a lot of shit. You know, but after. You know, go, you know, the Eagles beat them in the NFC Championship game the, the year before. All they did was say how they would have won. Yep. Oh, my God. If I, we, had, we had our quarterback. Well, yeah, 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 you had your quarterback, but we knocked your quarterback out. All off season talking shit. Oh, uh, they beat, you know, they, then they beat the Eagles. Give your props. You beat the Eagles handily during the regular season. They're like, oh, I wrote the blueprint. We 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 booked. We wrote the blueprint for how to beat the Eagles. Okay. All right. So they keep talk. They keep talking shit and keep talking shit and keep talking shit. After the Eagles lost the Super Bowl to the Chiefs last year, they sell. You know, Forty Nine ers fans and their stupid fucking radio show out in fucking San Francisco celebrated that the Eagles lost. Such fucking sore fucking losers, right? Yep. So you go through all this, you win the NFC Championship game, you're playing the same Chiefs that the Eagles fucking 
lost to last year mm. and you fucking choke yeah. to the same fucking Chiefs that the Eagles lost to. Same 10-point lead at halftime, just like the Eagles had. Eagles had a 10-point lead at halftime last year. Eagles blew it away. Chiefs had a 10, I mean, uh, 49ers had a 10-point lead. Chiefs come right the fuck back, run the same fucking play they ran against the Eagles. Last year, they called it corn dog, but this year, they called it Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Where they fucking just roll out the guy, he's wide fucking open, scores a touchdown yep. in overtime. And then it comes out that fucking, you know, Shanahan's such a fucking choke artist. Yeah. Besides the fact that he buys his hat from Baby Gap, <laughs> he fucking, he blew, he blew the 28 to three fucking lead when he was the, you know, offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons against the, against the Patriots. He blew a fucking, 10, 15 point lead when they played the Chiefs four years ago in the Super Bowl. And then he blew this fucking lead in the Super Bowl. He's a fucking choke artist. Yeah. And uh, this fucking, and, that, and now you, you go and see how they go into overtime and none of his players were prepared for overtime. None of them knew the fucking overtime rules. Even though right before overtime, the head official says, if. <laughs> Each team gets a chance to score. Yeah. You know, I, I was watching the uh, the mic'd up, and they're like, oh, really? You know, if, even if we score, they can... And they, oh, just watching all the the pundits go... You know, because, you know, the, the uh, 49ers won the coin flip, and they took the ball, which was fucking dumb. Yeah. Because if you take the ball first and, say, score a touchdown... Or, you know, a field goal. Now Patrick, Patrick Mahomes goes out there on a drive where he knows he at least has one extra down. Right. To fucking play with. Where if you go one, two, three, and you, you don't have the first, you might have to fucking punt. But if you know this, you got a fourth down no matter what. You have to, you know, use that fourth down. You can, you know strategize to use something special in that, that fourth down play. And they did that where it was fourth and something and fucking Holmes just fucking just kept the ball and ran, you know, 10, 15 yards or something like that and slid. So, you know, taking the ball first was foolish on, you know, Shanahan's part. But, you know, of course he downplays it. And right. they fired a defensive coordinator as a scapegoat, even though like his players didn't know the rules for overtime and stuff like that. But yeah, if you're a 49 fan, sorry, but you guys talk too much shit on my fucking team, too much shit on my fucking... They were even fucking crying at the fucking Super Bowl press conference saying how they went into the NFC Championship game in Philly, and they they said the city purposely fucking planned construction around their building. Oh, please. Just to, to, to keep them awake. And then this year, the 49ers are crying about the, you know... We, I'll give you this much. We bitched about the the playing surface at the Super Bowl field last year, right? You know, because it was fucked up. You know, this year the which 49ers is a legitimate, are, Which I think is a legitimate gripe, though. That's oh, a yeah. legitimate gripe. Yeah. You know, the fucking guy planning the field is a 49ers fan, and uh, he can easily just go, hey, guys, you might want to wear these kind of cleats. You know? Right, right. You know, if I'm going to throw conspiracy theories out there. But this year, you know, the the... The, the 49ers were crying about the condition of their practice field and all this stuff. So they did a lot of fucking, a lot of crying, a lot of whining, a lot of sore, you know, sportsmanship, you know, when we lost, mm -hmm. you know, when, you know, on a, a ticky tack fucking holding call. Oh God. You know, Brad, Brad Barry came out and said, yeah, I held him. You know, I, and he took fucking responsibility for it. For, 49ers lose. And it, they, they got they got one of the 49ers fucking buried his own fucking teammate. Yeah, yeah he fucking did. He, he fucking buried his own fucking teammate for not making the block on the uh, Chris Jones. Mm. And his teammate was like, well, yo, what the fuck? On social media. He goes, oh, sorry, man. I woke up drunk. I'm, I'm a little bit of a bitch. Dude, it's the fucking NFL, man. Just... 
God damn. Mm. God damn. Well, God damn. Fucking but hell. But yeah. Man. Yeah, I had to, I was, I was watching Super Bowl uh, with, a, with a big shit. You know what's good, dude? Uh, we watched the Super, thank God we watched the Super Bowl on Nickelodeon. We watched mm. the uh, Nickelodeon. Because apparently Tony Romo fucking blew the fucking finish of the the Super Bowl. Oh no shit! Like last play of the game, and he's just yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping, and he's talking all over Jim Nance's fucking call instead of letting it breathe, you know. And fucking in that moment, you gotta let Jim Nance fucking talk. Mm. And the final, you know, the, the Chiefs throw their fucking. The, Game winning touchdown, and he goes, Oh, that's the such and such play. That's the such and such. I was like, Dude, the game just ended. Shut the fuck up. Let Jim Nance make the fucking call. <laughs> you fucking dunce. You dip shit. What's wrong with you? It, it's amazing how Tony Romo has, he was the fucking bell of the ball. He was the, the fucking, the, the best thing in football commentary in his first year, but now it's just like, Holy shit, is he fucking. Shit the bed. Uh-huh. He's, you know, like people, like I've heard they've, they, you know, they've had to tell him to fucking dial it the fuck down, you know, man, Jesus Christ. But uh, it'll be interesting seeing that what they do next year with uh, Brady in the booth now. Oh, yeah. You know, Br- Br- Brady, you know, starts doing play by play next year. So, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't hate Kansas City. I don't hate the Chiefs. You know, South Philly's got a, there's a Kansas City Chiefs bar in South Philly called Big Charlie Saloon. Yeah. So, which is odd, but, you know, nobody fucks with them, yeah. you know. I'm know. sure they did in the beginning, but, you know, have people have just come to accept it. You know, I think it's because the Chiefs are an AFC team, so. Right. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I was rooting for the Chiefs, you know. Yep. You know, with... Uh, you know, Jason Kelsey being there rooting for his brother and stuff like that. And anytime the Eagles were doing good in the playoffs, you know, and, you know, when it, when we were in the NFC Championship game in the Super Bowl, Travis Kelsey came to root for the Eagles. So, you know, there's a little, there's, there, there's that connection. And, yeah. uh, you know, I like watching the uh, New Heights podcast every week. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they won, but uh, more, more so, I'm glad that the fuck of 49ers lost. Yes, yeah, that was a because uh, they've been such they've been such crybaby bitch fucking heels. <laughs> well, we would have won it. We would have exposed you. We would uh, fuck you. Get fucked, San Francisco. <laughs> uh, but I do want to. Now- in, in, in the words of Conrad Thompson, and I'll let you get to your uh, next deal. Go poop with your pants on. <laughs> that is my favorite. Like, just like I don't, I don't, I don't think man. he invented it, but he said it once, and as far as I'm concerned, it's his. Go poop with your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> and I love shit humor, so it's just just a visual of someone taking the shit with their pants. <laughs> Of the visual of somebody sitting on a seat, a toilet <laughs> seat, with their pants full, fully, fully pulled up, pulling, doing a play doh barber shop in their fucking <laughs> pants, or it's just busting out the stitches. Oh my god! Just filling them jeans it up. Did, just it just shoots out the back of the top of the jeans and just <laughs> just fucking wrecking a good pair of slacks, man. I am yeah about it, but. Uh, yeah, with wrecking, foot- the, re- re- wrecking your Wranglers, you know. <laughs> with football season behind us now, I have some breaking news for you, sir. Oh. With, uh, I was just getting our uh, Ask Meanie questions up for the next segment, and I saw that Kyle Schwarber has reported to Clearwater today. And nice. We are getting ready to see pitchers and catchers report early next week. Uh, looks like uh, Monday or Tuesday is when that's going to happen. And then opening day for Philadelphia is Thursday, March 28th. Actually, opening day for uh, MLB, rather, is March 28th. So we are getting very close to baseball season, which means warmer weather, longer days, shorts in public. And I yes, can't sir. Really and uh, the Phillies wait. just signed uh, 
an, a utility player that's pretty good. I can't a Whitmore or Whit, Whit something with something. Mm. So everybody's talk, everybody's talking about they're just Starcom Whiz Wit. <laughs> uh, I can't, hold on, give me two seconds. Yeah, go on. I'm gonna pull. I'm uh, actually pulling uh, up the uh, actual uh, day. Uh, okay, so it is opening day in Philadelphia. Is Thursday, March 28th at 3.05 against the Atlanta Braves. And the season will officially be underway, and I cannot fucking wait. So, the uh, Philadelphia e- uh, <laughs> Eagles, Philadelphia Phillies signed free agent infielder Witt Merrifield in agreement with the Phillies' one year, $8 million contract, which is really good because he does, he plays. Th- he can play the infield, and he can also play outfield. So uh, when Rojas isn't hitting, I mean, we got Rojas out there because he's an amazing fielder, but this guy's got speed. This guy can hit. So yeah. and he's supposed to be pretty uh, pretty fast. So yeah. I'm happy about that. Yeah, I'm, ha- I'm happy to get on. That's the beauty about living in Philly. Yeah. You know, you get a little bummed out about, you know, the football team, you know, getting eliminated from the playoffs, but... Oh, well, there's the Sixers. Oh, well, there's the Flyers. <laughs> Here comes the Phillies, you know? So, yep. I think maybe there's one day in the Phillies history where there's like no sports team spying. So, I oh, and we got the Union too. So, we got the Union. We got we got five, you know, we're five for five. We used to be four for four, but now we're five to five. Thanks for the, uh, thanks to the Sons of Ben. So. Yep. I am uh, very excited about baseball season. Looking forward to the Phillies coming back and hopefully a World Series appearance this year. Even though the I want a hot dog, God, hot dog won't. in one hand, a beer in the other, and Phillies on my TV. Give me a fucking. I'm going to go to the stadium. Give me a hot dog, a Philly Frank, and uh, a fucking Federal Donut, and I'll put the Federal Dude. Donut on the Glizzy. And I'll fucking the, the federal donuts coming along next to the uh, twenty three hundred arena. It's coming along pretty good. I pass it every day. Oof. Are they going to be open before uh, before Mania? I would imagine they would. I be, right? f- I fucking hope so. Twenty twenty four is here in full swing, and that means it's time for a New Year's resolution check in with our friends at Manscaped. Newsflash. It's never too late to level up your grooming game and keep your bush tamed. Manscaped's new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether you're going for a trim or that clean shaven look, this trimmer has you covered. Trusted by 10 million men worldwide. Now is your time to get a grip on your grooming with our exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code MINDMINI for 20% off plus free shipping. The ball has dropped. But don't drop the ball on your balls. Introducing the MVP of 2024, Manscaped's fifth generation lawnmower. It's not just a trimmer, it's your grooming sidekick. And let me tell you something. Some of my New Year's resolutions have been to, to eat healthy, get in shape, and keep little John on the East Side boys looking fine and dandy. And I'm hitting three for three this year so far and the manscapes lawnmower 5.0 is equipped with two skin safe blade heads a standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires it's like having a personal stylist at your fingertips or really wherever you need it and did we mention that it's waterproof because a trim in the shower is the only way to start your day. And for my guys who want the full grooming experience, look no further than Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0. Inside of that grooming kit, you'll get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped's ear and nose hair trimmer, and essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother Ball Aftershave Lotion and the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Yeah, it's deodorant for your balls. Bet you didn't think you needed that, but guess what? You do. And as a gesture for the new year, they even threw in two free gifts, the Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 toiletry bag, because they know good and well, you're still rocking your boxers from high school. Let's face it, resolutions come and go, but a well-groomed you is here to stay thanks to Manscaped. So go to manscaped.com right now and get 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code Mind meaning that's 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code mind meaning at manscaped.com embrace a new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer courtesy of manscaped and as always we thank them for sponsoring the program well, god damn that would be a great fucking thing speaking of mini mini mania is coming along uh nicely 
Uh, we got we just got a uh, deal with Oscar Oscar Blues Brewery, who are going to be in attendance to give out some uh, swag. Love it. And we're also going to have free samples of the Beast uh, from Monster Energy Monster Energy Monster Energies flavored uh, hard drink called the Beast. Mm. So we're, we're going to have free 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 samples of some free booze. Uh, we're going to have Oscar Blues Brewing giving away some swag, working on some uh, stuff for you know some free food and stuff like that. So uh, I call it a party, people calling the party, but it's going to be one big hang. I want people from around the world to come there and just hang out and yep. talk about wrestling, make some new friendships, have, have a good time. I am looking forward to, to Meanie Mania as well. Don't forget, it's going to be at Cusker's Tavern at uh, 17th and Shunk on Thursday, April 4th from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Come and see us. It's a live pay-per-view kickoff event to get your WrestleMania weekend started. So we hope to see you there. And Meanie, I want to know a question for you, sir. A hope and a wish, if you will. Yeah, of course. A question. What's that? Are you ready to ask Meanie? I would love to. It's time to ask me anything. Ask me something. This is a drizzling shit. I can't remember what regular air smells like. <laughs> Don't forget to tweet us your questions. I had to get them all in. Using the hashtag Ask Meany, and when you may hear them asked on the program, uh, Meany, you got your old uh, old staple there, old faithful. Like I said, I'll probably be drinking this during the Phillies game. Uh, <laughs> Bell V's pumpkin pie, sparkling water, and I got. A uh, a cheap knockoff shit from Aldi. This is the uh, Sparkling Frost Pink Grapefruit, my favorite flavor. So thank you, Mrs. Goober. And we're going to crack them here. Three, two, one. There she is. Mm. Mm, so good. Pinky's up. up. Oh, yeah. Good shit. Got a little on my mic. Jesus yep. Christ. It's a little, little grapefruity on the mic. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> There's worse scents that have been on this mic. Dude, tell me about it. There's worse fucking things Especially. that have happened here. Uh, so let me see here. Let me go back into Twitter. RJ Krasinski. What's up, RJ? What's going on, man? What up, RJ? What it is, man? We got two questions from him today. An MLB flavored question. Early predictions for the MLB playoffs. Ooh, that's too close to call, man. Especially, of course, I'm, I'm sure the... Phillies will be in there. Uh, yeah. As far as I, I mean, yeah, sure, you're going to have the Phillies. You're going to have the Braves again. You're going to, you know, I don't know. It uh, depends on, I hate making it. I mean, it's one thing if it's NFL where you got 18 games or 17 games, got 162 fucking games of baseball. So who's healthy? Who's uh, hitting the right strides? That's a little bit too early for, for baseball. Yeah. No. Uh, let's see. Where's the next question here? Sorry, my screen is frozen. Hold on one sec. Here we go. Sure. Who has a better wrestling mind? Jim Cornette, Paul Heyman, or Eric Bischoff? Uh, well, fucking Heyman and Cornette are basically the same person. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, both started off as ringside photographers both started off as managers. Both ran their own wrestling promotions. You know, you know, one's the southern version of the other, and the other's the northern version of the other. So, to me, they're basically the same guy. Um, you know, Jim's such a great historian as well, too. But... Uh, I would have to say uh, Jim and Paul would have to be tied for first when you think of all the stars they made. Yeah. And, you know, the, the careers they made, the booking they've done, you know, made behind the scenes as creative, made in front of the cameras as a manager, doing their job to get other people over. Yeah. You know, shit fucking, you know, Paul learned from, you know, the three wise men, you know, yeah. 
you know, Blassie, Wizard, Albano, you know, being around all the boys as a young teenager. Cornette the same, learning from the Jarrett's, and, you know, starting off with the Jarrett's initially and then learning from Watts. Mm-hmm. Now, Bischoff, the good wrestling mind, but he's more on the the business side. And that's not an insult. That's not an insult. I think he's he he's pretty much said that too. He's more interested in numbers and yep. ads and ratings and stuff like that. And you know, I I mean they're all great wrestling minds because they bring different things their their focus are are just as important. Right. You know, I think for booking in ring stuff, Cornette and Hammond are tied for number one. But to you know, uh, market and advertise and, you know, generate you know, uh, interest. You know, Bischoff did a great thing. He, Bischoff did one of the few things nobody's ever done, and that's beat Vince McMahon. Right. Head to head. Yeah. You know, so uh, they're all very important for different different reasons. I hate, like, I always hate Mount Rushmore's and, Mm-hmm. lists and stuff like that. I just saw a bunch of indie guys get fucking their balls twisted over some list some some random fan wrote, you know. Yeah. You know, or people getting their balls twisted over to PWI 500 or whatever. It's like, come on, man. It's just... It's just like people getting fucked up about Meltzer's five-star. Like, <clears throat> I don't give a shit about five-star lists. I don't care. I like, no. what, I like what I like. I, I don't like what I don't like. And that's subjective to me in my opinion and my taste in wrestling. I don't give a shit. If, if everybody, if that's how you base your wrestling approach and your taste is by somebody else list, I mean, great, good for you. But like, that's not how I'm going to handle it. Right. I, 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 yeah. I don't enjoy a lot of the stuff that Dave enjoys. And I don't think most people do now anyway, but like, or at least enjoy what he has to say. But like, I don't know, man, like the PWI 500 list, like there's a collection of people and, and shout out to Kevin McElvaney, by the way, the editor in chief over there. I love much love to Kevin and the team over there. It's a group of folks that, kind of collect together and they make their decisions based upon who they think is the best in the industry. And that's the PWI list. Like that's, no one's asking for your feedback on it. You know what I mean? Like no one, like it's, it's their list. Like if you don't like their list, then make your own. I don't know. Like it just, I don't know. It seems, it seems very silly and, and, and ridiculous, but I agree with you. I think, I think each of them have their own place in wrestling history. Um, And I think they have their own, Avenue. I think Cornette and Heyman, like you said, they kind of cross over each other in a lot of ways, just based on their history and what they've done. Um, but I think it would be ignorant and, and um, it would almost be willfully ignorant to exclude Bischoff from a conversation of best of the best, strictly because of what he did. Right. So like yeah. he, he, the NWO, I mean, that's, you know, like, look, I mean, we're still, like the NWO has bred and created so many things and it, it did, yep. you know, good, bad, or indifferent, it revolutionized the industry. It changed the industry forever. And he was yep. responsible for that. You know, whether, yes. you know, I know they're saying like, oh, he thought about an idea in Japan or whatever it is. Like that's irrelevant. Like he made something and created it. So to say that Bischoff isn't as important as Heyman or anybody else, I think would be, that would be a a, a, a great disservice to what he brought to the industry. But- I mean, Bischoff went right to Ted Turner and says, you know, I need a, I need live TV Monday nights to go head to head, head to head with Vince. Yeah. He had the fucking balls to do that. He went, had the balls to go to fucking Ted Turner himself and say, I need live TV Monday nights. <laughs> and nobody, uh, and he, you know, he, he fucking took Vince on head on. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're, they're all great minds. Yeah, I hate putting people in order, but to me, yeah, Cornette and Heyman, as much as they've probably have had their issues with each other, they're they're basically the once the yang, once the yang. Yeah. And last question for our from our friend Carlo Carlson. What up, Carlo? What up, Carlo? We love your. We absolutely love your photoshops that you do for us every week after listening to the show. <laughs> our number one fan. Yes. We love. I love this guy so much. Carlo's the fucking best. Uh, while listening to Big Jim Murray on the Seaports Hub, I heard something that I need old Blue and Goob's input on: Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis? 
Always love the pod. Keep them coming. Ooh. And there's a photo of you dressed up. Your face is photoshopped onto uh, the Monopoly guy. Second prize in beauty contest. Collect $10. Well, thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Sweet. Uh, I'll have to say Super Nintendo just because Genesis was good too. I, I, the only thing I really played on there was a, a, I played Madden. I played NHL hockey. Mm. But like a, lo, a lot of the Super Fire Pro Wrestling games were on Super Nintendo that I would order from uh, there's like a Japanese import store in California that I would like call them and be like, hey, you got the new Super Fire Pro Wrestling? They would send it to me then, you know, next day mail or whatever. And oh, shit. That was on, that was on, you could only play, you could play it on Super Nintendo, but you needed a Game Shark to play it or whatever. So I would have to say Super Nintendo just for the fact that like I, the, the wrestling games I really loved were, were on that. I would say Super Nintendo is probably mine as well. Like it was that, because we had the regular Nintendo but I feel like Super Nintendo was that bridge between regular Nintendo and Sega Genesis. You know, like it was like you like there was something advanced about it and it kind of like set the tone and tenor for everything else. Um, so I would say Super Nintendo, I think, is my choice. Um, but uh, I'm trying to remember the game. Virtual Bart was the name of the game that we played a lot. And I think huh? that was Super Nintendo. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm at. And where we're at right now is thanking you all for listening every single week and for you, Blue, for answering these uh. questions every week, sir. We appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate the Pod Squad as well for being here. And I want to know, sir, uh, as we wrap up today's program, um, where can everyone keep up with all things Blue when they're not listening to this program? If you would like to follow the Blue Mini on all forms of social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Blue Mini BWO on all forms of social media. If you'd like to support the Blue Mini, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Blue Mini. If you'd like to support Mind of the Mini, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Mini. Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand, go to ColarandElbowBrand.com. Use coupon code Mini or use coupon code Mind and save 10% over there at conelbowbrand.com. Now you got the great look of shirts. If you're a beer fan like myself, you want to look good, you want to smell good, go to madcapbeardcare.com. Get the blue spruce beard oil and bomb. Josh Thornton does an amazing job over there at madcapbeardcare.com. He rounds up the kitties in his neighborhood, takes them to the vet, leaves them off better than when he find, found them. So if you're a cat lover like myself, go to madcapbeardcare.com. The Ultra Pro Wrestling video game coming to all major consoles in 2024. Uh, the Ultra Pro Wrestling re- video, sorry, the Ultra Pro Wrestling video game ca- contains not only original characters created by the amazing Hal Haney, but many real world wrestlers, including myself and many others. I'm trying not to spoil. So to see the ones they have talked about, go to ultraprowrestling.com. Or follow them on Twitter at UPW Video Game. That's UltraProWrestling.com and UPW Video Game. The figure collection Bone Crushing Wrestlers Series 1 variants of the Blue Mini are available now. But for how long? I do not know. Uh, all Series 1s can be ordered now at shop.figurecollections.com. That's shop.figurecollections.com. Type Blue Mini in the search bar and uh, pick either the uh, Old School Mini or the BWO Mini. Each way, either one, you're not making a wrong decision. Uh, I tried to sound smart there, and I failed. So you did fine. That was fine. You were good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I tried to book on the fly. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Jim Nelson over at GlaciersofIce.com. Uh, Jim made a three of three only handmade custom BWO Air Jordan one sneakers for Stevie Nova and myself. Each pair takes Jim about fifty hours per pair. If you want to like, see these awesome shoes that he makes, follow him on Instagram at Glacier Studio Art. That's Instagram at Glacier Studio Art. Amazing work there. Uh, to have the Blue Mini on your podcast. Go to podstars.net. That's P O D S T A R Z.net. Register your podcast. Book the blue guy. 
Let's have a, a fun conversation over there at podstars.net. Cameo.com slash blue mini BW for birthdays, holidays, and well wishes. Book through the site, not through the app. The app takes too much money. Uh, yeah, the app sucks. Uh, the, the, the cut they take is just uh, crazy. So if you want to, you know, spend your hard earned money and book uh, any talent yeah. on a cameo, go, to, go through the website. So uh, go to cameo.com slash blue mini BWO. Uh, but most importantly, Mr. Bernard, where can we find you, sir? Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Threads, and Blue Sky. You can find me all of those places at This Is Goober. Yes, that's my handle. No, I'm not changing it. It's a brand pal, so find me there as well. Don't forget to check out Foundation Radio by going to foundationradio.net and also subscribing today at youtube.com slash at Foundation Radio Pod. I have a lot of great stuff coming up. I'm doing a whole release of my foundation chats that I have in my archive. I was waiting for that before we did the reads, and it came out now <laughs> during that. So uh, any hoozle, uh, this week, uh, the, for the next couple of weeks, I have my interviews and conversations with Asher Roth, Diamond Dallas Page, and the Renegade Twins. They're going to be coming out every Tuesday on my YouTube page, so go ahead and subscribe today. And as a bonus for subscribers, YouTube exclusive, my tw- 2011 conversation with rapper Yellow Wolf all the way back in my WCUR days when I was on college radio and I had him on the show. I haven't listened to this interview in 13 years and I'm currently going through right now. Carl and I are processing it. Go ahead and check it out when it comes out this week. Uh, so go there right now to the YouTube page, like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you to everyone who's doing that so far. The Feinberg Method. Go to thefeinbergmethod.com. Use promo code Goober and save up to 20% off of your entire purchase. Brad Feinberg is ready to work with you for your mental and physical well-being. So thefeinbergmethod.com. Shout out to the homies at the 10th Ward Barbershop in downtown Lawrenceville on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. I'm going to go see them again in a couple of weeks. Going to go get trimmed up and looking nice uh, pre-WrestleMania. Kane will be out here for the big game as well. Uh, So you want to go and sign up today. Go and make an appointment with them today at 10thwardbarbershop.com. Get yourself looking great. Foundation, or excuse me, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Foundation Radio. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Pick up a shirt and keep the lights on at Casa de Meanie and hopefully continually in perpetuity at the Barnard Home for Wayward and Troubled Youth. I want to thank you all for listening today. Patreon.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Sign up today. Tears starting at just $10. Go and pick up. Uh, and and we're actually join us today on the show. I'm really having trouble with my mouth here at the end of the program. Uh, don't forget to, to use the link in the show notes. We are an official partner, brand partner with wweshop.com. So as you're gearing up for WrestleMania, as you're gearing up for the live shows, go and pick up some swag from there. Use our exclusive link and pick up your stuff there of your favorite superstar today. We want to thank all of our sponsors as well that you've heard throughout the program. We want to thank you for listening. Subscribe, leave us a five-star review, comment on our episodes. Let us know how we're doing. If you like what we're doing, if you don't like, let us know either way, okay? We really appreciate you. So, for the Blue Mini, I am Adam Bernard. Join us again each and every week as we take a trip through the mind. Peace. This episode of Mind of the Meanie is hosted and executively produced by the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. It was mixed and engineered by Carl Pinnell. Additional narration is provided by the executive voice, Sam Kreps. That's me. Our intro music was performed by the Swamp Candles. Our outro music was performed by Chikara. Additional musical accompaniment is performed by Enrichment. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, or X or whatever, at Mind of the Meanie. And become part of the pod squad by going to patreon.com slash mind of the meanie. Find our entire show archive at mindofthemeanie.com. This has been a Butts Carlton Media Production. Butts Carlton Proprietor. That was Blue Mini's brain out.